Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now when I started the series, I think I knew deep down that eventually we would have to get the bow of Ferdinand. But I just kept lying to myself, hey the crossbow is good enough, it, it, the bolt activations are great. You can do tons of content with a crossbow. That's true, but we're getting to a point now where we need to get some range upgrades. And the Bofa is really the next major upgrade. And unfortunately the Bofa Din requires a Song of the Elves, which means we're going to Priftinus. Well in the last episode we got the ball rolling with the completion of Underground Pass, but that's just the beginning. Oh my god, this offer was in here for so long. Kind of a leftover one for when forestry was popular. Uh, we have a hundred, more or less, trapped disarmored blueprints. This method is pretty much dead because the volume's so low, but we were able to slowly buy these guys over the last month. So we quickly converted them into trap disarmers, sold them for 7.5 mil, bought them for 5. So a 2.5 mil profit on that. Hey, patience did pay off. We're trying to stack up a bit of money here because we want to unlock a couple different chunks. Because once we enter Tyronwyn, I don't want to run all the way back through the Underground Pass just to go get more money to unlock another chunk. It's already kind of annoying enough to have to do it for the quest line itself, so let's not make our life difficult. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna clear off these offers here. We did make a bit more money with some forestry items, but I'm done with them for a couple reasons, which I'm sure you can guess. That said though, we are now up to a 15 mil cash stack, and this should hopefully be enough to buy a couple items. Now looking at the bottom of the list here, we don't have anything particularly useful that's reasonably cheap, so we're just going to go for some of our cheapest options right now. And we're going to buy four items, the flared trousers for 2.6 mil, the ranger's tunic for 3.6, the Dagonai rope set for 4.2 mil, and the arim's rope top zero for 4 mil. Four new items, and that should be enough to unlock the majority of Tyranwin, or at least the areas that we need, and hopefully be enough at least to complete Regicide, unless I'm forgetting something. Now looking at the map of Tyranwin, uh, the area is not actually that large. We have four chunks for Perfidinus to the north, and we have this four chunk quadrant to the south which is required for Roving Elves, Regicide, and the Song of the Elves as well. So all these tiles are unavoidable, we'll have to unlock all of them. The one thing that's a little bit sad though, looking down at Zalandra, we're going to complete Regicide, but we won't really be able to unlock Zalra, as there's no quests that go down there as far as I'm aware, and we'd have to unlock like three more chunks just to get Zalra, and Zalra is not even one of the best money makers in the game anymore, so it's definitely not worth sacrificing chunks just for Zalra. So we are exiting the underground pass with four chunks in our back pocket. It's time to unlock the elven lands. Okay, so that didn't take too long to, uh, well, we burned through all of our chunks. Now, is there anything useful unlocked in this quadrant here? I don't think so. I mean, we got a magic tree, the most inconvenient furnace in all of Gilinor. I I'm Nothing really here is, is really jumping out to me. Hey, we got some runite rocks actually, so hey, maybe we'll mine those at some point. Oh no! <laughs> Knew this was gonna happen somehow. Unfortunately I forgot about this section of the quest. We need to get coal tar. And there's actually two locations we can get it from, but both of them are in chunks we don't have unlocked. And that kinda sucks because we have to teleport out of here, make some money, and then go all the way back through the underground pass again. There's really no way to teleport back to Tyranwin until you've done Regicide. Well, there's nothing for it. I guess we're just gonna have to come back later. So I was looking through a list of money makers that we have available, and apparently creating olive oil is 1.3 mil per hour, which is insanely good for how easy it is. And it's actually literally competing with my best consistent money makers, so yeah, why not? Okay, so we're starting with 400 sacred oil, which is currently selling for 3.5k each. Not bad, one hour brings us 1.4 mil minus some supply costs, so 
yeah, literally about 1.3 mil an hour. That's insane. Okay, so we did another hour and a half or so, and we ended up with 587 sacred oil, kind of a random amount. We've been kind of grinding this out all day, but they are selling for 3.5k each, so no worries there. So we need one more item for regicide, and that item's gonna be the Team Cape Zero. We're able to pick it up for 3.5 mil. Pretty cool looking item, we'll just wear it, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so interesting choice here. We went all the way back through the underground pass and we're right back to where we got stuck before. Now the quest helper wants me to go to this chunk just to the south here to get some coal tarp. But there actually is a few other places along this lake bed here where you can pick it up. One of them's actually in the chunk to the west. I don't know if any of these have any particular benefit, but since we have to unlock one of them, I think I'm actually gonna go with this one over here. Unlocks a little bit more of this kind of encampment city, which I think just has the potential of being a little bit more useful. And if we just come a little bit down here, there should be some coal tar, I hope. Yes, there it is. So, pretty happy to have that one done with. Regicide, done. And more importantly, we have Taranwin actually kind of unlocked the majority of it actually already. It's not a very big region, which is kind of nice. Now, just looking at the region, you would think we wouldn't actually need to unlock that many more chunks to complete the Song of the Elves, but it's a little bit more deceiving than that. So although Morning Ends Part 1 and 2 don't really require that many chunks at all, we're kind of just retreading over the same area, there are two other precursor quests that do. Big Chompy Bird Hunting, which to be fair is not too bad, but the quest I'm dreading most of all is actually Making History. Making History is a novice level quest, it's super easy to do, but it requires you to go to a few different regions of Gilinor, including Relica and Castle Wars, which is... Uh, it's a bit of a dilemma. I, I honestly haven't figured out how in the hell I'm gonna get to Relica, because there's so many ways to get there and tons of dead chunks on the way. So making history is gonna be really problematic. While I think of what the best route forward for that is, we're actually just gonna start by tackling a more straightforward quest. And to do that, we're gonna need a bit more money. Okay, so we've been at this for about three hours today. We've managed to sanctify 1,000 olive oil, which means we have a stack of 1,000 sacred oil. We should be able to sell this off for well over three mil. It's still going for, oh my, 3,900. That's insane, actually. Okay, we'll try to sell that off quickly. Oh, it's a good day. Yes, it's sold off. So that will bring us up to nearly seven mil. Now, there's a few items I've put off buying for a while, but because of the new League reward shop that came out, I have no idea what their prices are. They're so infrequently traded. That would be the Shattered Trousers Tier 3. We're just going to try buying for 2 mil, which we did actually buy. That's really lucky. And another item here, the Shattered Cane. We're going to try buying it for 4 mil. Came through for 3.5. My goal this episode is I want to get rid of the last bit of kind of riffraff at the bottom. There's a few League related rewards that still need to be purchased, but once those are gone, we are truly going to be feeling the squeeze as item prices exponentially increase in price. Okay, so we're trying to complete big chompy bird hunting. It'd be nice if we just cheese around here, but I'm getting the feeling that that's not gonna work. Ah, dead tile right at the end. I think regardless, this wouldn't have really mattered that much. I think we need both these chunks probably anyway. Okay, so for this quest, we had to unlock Rance's Cave and also the chunk to the west. Few interesting things here. We, of course, get access to Chompy's Fairy Ring and, of course, the quest. This quest is always so buggy. I just waited like 15 minutes for a Chompy to spawn. Whatever, we're done. So that was actually a prerequisite for Morning Ends Part 1, and if we look at the requirements, we have one more quest on there, which I'm pretty sure we can just straight up do it. I don't think we need any more unlocks, chunks, or stats or anything, but you know, I've said that before, so I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so although we have unlocked Taranwin, how do we get back here? I mean, we can't take the charter ship, it's not unlocked. We can't take that fairy ring because it doesn't go anywhere. Well, there's one way to get back, it's the Iowerth Camp Teleport. Thank Christ for these. 
pops us off in the camp here. Not super convenient, but still much better than running back through the underground pass every time. It's time to do roving elves. Okay, so do we want the bow or do we want the shield? Well, I'm pretty sure I want the shield. You can get both eventually, but the entire point of this journey is to get the bow fared in anyway. So I don't think the crystal bow is going to be particularly useful at that point. So we'll take the crystal shield, which is a really good tank shield, and we could use it for, well, anything really. So we are very slowly approaching 97 agility. We have kind of taken our foot off the gas a bit for the Hallowed Sepulcher, but we do have a bit of loot here still, and we have some Hallowed Sacks we can buy as well. About another 2 mil on loot. Okay, so I actually decided just to take a break, and we grabbed a Slayer task, and we ended up with Dust Devils. That's an interesting task. Uh, conventionally, very good, but we don't have the Catacombs, which means the only place to do this is in the desert. Now, I have no idea if... Uh, Dust Devils in the Smoke Dungeon are any good, but uh, I'm gonna give them a try. Oh man, these are awkward, but their aggression range is really weird. So we kind of figured out a way to burst them, similar to as if we were in the Catacombs, but overall our XP per hour not nearly as good. 44k, you know, still better than most of my tasks. Plus we get some magic experience, so I'll probably still do them, but this place is kind of uh, out of the way. <laughs> now, last episode I made a bit of a mistake. I actually forgot about one chunk unlock I could do. Hey, it's a good mistake to remember, at least. Now, last episode when I was bursting Maniacal Monkeys, I decided to buy the Virtus Mask because of the percent magic damage bonus it offers, but I actually forgot to unlock a chunk with it, so we actually had one extra chunk banked, and we're going to use this to unlock Letya. We're going to need the city very soon, and it might even have a few interesting things to offer. Now, it probably doesn't, honestly. I don't even know what I'm saying. We can get a teleport crystal there, though, so that will be nice. So it's about two weeks later, uh, I wonder what happened during that time. <laughs> yep, we were playing leagues, and during that time, well, we didn't really do much on this account, but we did leave an offer in for the Ceridomans tier. Uh, this item doesn't trade very often, so it, you know something useful happened during that time period. We were able to buy it for about 4 mil, which means we can finally unlock another chunk. Now, where are we going next? Well, I think I'm going to keep putting off the terribleness that is trying to access Relica. So instead, we're going to just try to complete Morning Ends Part 1. It's not actually that hard of a quest, but we will need access to one particular area, Arandar, specifically this chunk. Essentially, we need access to it to kill a mourner, and they should be accessible from here, or at least attackable from here. We'll have to find out. Alright, so we have a bit of an interesting dilemma here. Uh, how do we get to this chunk? I, I don't know if there's any way to actually get there directly. We'll probably have to go through the outpost, because there's a lake blocking the way through the Gnome Stronghold, and there's really no other way to get there. Not the end of the world, because this chunk has the start location for the dreaded making history quest, so we have to unlock it anyway. I guess we might as well get started with it. I definitely can't finish it now though. Yep, so immediately we have to go to the observatory. I hate this quest. So I decided to do a little bit of combat training, and the best way I've found to do that is just by killing fire shades. Got all the way up to 87 defense. I realized recently that my defense levels were actually kind of low, and that would be an easy way to make myself a bit tankier. Goal is 90, but for now we'll stop at 87. Each fire remain is worth still about 4k each, and we got 300 of them. So that's uh, 1.3 mil just in fire remains. So you know I'm desperate when we're doing a little bit of runecrafting. We actually managed to get a full runecrafting level. That's going to bring us to 82, which I think we can now do a diary requirement or something, and also make astral runes. Unfortunately, we can't really make those yet, but eventually when we unlock Fremenic, probably will be handy. Okay, so how many runes did it take to get that full level? Well, about 12,000 blood runes, uh, which at today's prices is another 2.2 mil in pretty much pure profit. So today we made about 3.5 mil just from our two money makers, plus we had 3 mil in the bank. Plus we can scavenge, I think, a little bit more. There's a, a little bit of goodies in here still. We tried to do some demonic gorillas, uh, failed unfortunately. I had the crazy idea of doing them off task, I know. 
who would ever subject themselves to that. Plus, we have a little bit of sepulcher loot. After everything's said and done, we have 8.5 mil. So I think it is finally time. Right now, there are four items on our list that are under 4 million gold. And I think we should just have enough money to buy all of them. That's because some of them are league rewards and they have fallen in value a bit, but we'll have to see for sure. So we have the Shattered Relic Hunter outfit, which we're able to pick up for two mil. The Trailblazer globe. The Shattered Top tier three. And the Twisted Coat, which we're gonna try buying for 3.3 mil. No luck, I guess we'll have to be patient on that one. So those items purchased, the easy part of this series is officially done with. Now what do I mean when I say the easy part of the account is done with? Well, one thing we haven't actually talked about that much is the item price curve. So technically we're nearing the halfway mark as far as total items we have to acquire, but no way does that mean we are halfway done as far as the GP that we have to earn. I think a nice way to visualize it is looking at different price ranges and noting how many items are within that range. So for the cheapest items, those between 1 and 2 mil, there were 75 items in between this amount. So almost a quarter of the total items fell into this price range. Now there's a bit of a caveat here, because the list is static, you could kind of more count this as a 0 to 2 mil price range, as a few of the items fell under the 1 mil mark as well, but by and large, the majority of items fall into this price range. For 2 to 3 mil items, there's 27 of them. And where we're at right now, 3 to 4 mil items, there were 28 of them. But now, all of that is complete. Now you'll notice after this section, there's another sharp drop off. There's only 7 items in the range of 4 to 5 mil. 9 in the range of 5 to 6. There are 12 items that are between 6 and 7 mil. 9 items that are between 7 and 8 mil. 13 items between 8 and 9 mil and 13 items between 9 and 10 mil. So items are going to start increasing in price rapidly. And then once we get past the 10 mil items, kind of exponentially, as there's often only a singular item between each 1 mil range. So we have to hope that what we have set up now is strong enough and profitable enough as we're going to need so much more money very soon to progress this series. So we have three chunks in our back pocket right now, and we need to unlock a Randar. You can see the quest locations right there, so we're going to unlock it. And really now we're hoping that this is all we need. I'm pretty sure you can attack the Mourner just from the north side of the chunk. If not, uh, well, we're going to be very sad. <laughs> okay, this should be fine, I think. It should walk over here. That's all we need. I think we just need one kill. All the Mourner clothes, there we go. What the hell? They drain your stats so much. Don't worry. God, this feels like playing any kind of first-person shooter on the N64. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. So there we go, Morning's Part 1, done with. Only really experience as a reward for that one. But of course, you get the joy now of being able to do Morning's Part 2. So there it finally is, 97 agility. Took a long time, which means we only have two levels left, but 1.1 million to the next level, oh my god. Oh yes, it finally happened, we got it. The Ring of Endurance on 294 coffin opens. So a bit unlucky, but I don't really care. Finally, we got one. I'm hoping we get another one by the time we reach 99, but I don't know, we're getting pretty close now. That's massive. Um, so that's another chunk unlocked that's going right in our collection. And a 29 mil item for that. Yes, that's so good. Finally, we got it. So that means we still have three chunks at our disposal to use as we see fit. So we're gonna need all of those and possibly more to figure out a way to get to Relica. We need to dip dodge around all of the dead chunks and find a way there that's not wasteful and doesn't take us another few months of progressing to do it as well. There's so many ways to get the Relica, 
You can go through the lighthouse. That's one of my considerations. I could go north from this fairy ring over here. You could go up across the bridge. But ultimately, to do Song of the Elves, we have to get there. But that's going to have to wait till the next episode. Thank you everyone for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next episode.